Hello, calculus students. Hopefully it's not echoing too badly. I'm working with you today in my kitchen. Uh, remember, before you start watching this test prep video, you better have tried this on your own first or you're cheating if you're just watching this for the first time without even trying these problems and you're being lazy. So here's how we do these here. Uh, if you're, just fast forward to the ones you need help with if, you're, if you already got this. The graph of the function f of x is shown below, so we got this all crazy stuff going. Uh, sorry, this is so grainy. When I did a screenshot, it wasn't good. Which of the following statements is true about f? So f is undefined at x equals 1. x equals 1 is here. Let's go. It's undefined there, but it is defined there. It's a filled in circle. So that one is actually false, so it is not true. So we're not going to do that one. In other words, say, see, f is undefined. That's false. We want true only. F is defined but not but not continuous at x equals 2. So x equals 2, this is defined, but it says it's not continuous. Well, this is continuous, so that one's false. Uh, F is defined and continuous at x equals 3. Here's x equals 3. We've got a vertical asymptote going on here. It is not continuous, so that one is false. They're all false. So in other words, none of these are true. That's why it is E. Number 2, this function has a hole. What's the y value of the hole? So this is kind of cool. You've got something going on here. You've got a hole, and then the graph keeps going. So let's first figure out where this hole is. What's the x value? The only way to do that is if we can factor it. So this is going to be x minus 3, x plus 3. Uh, what's this one? x, uh, x plus 7 x minus 3. Sorry, that's getting sloppy. The x minus 3 will cancel. If x minus 3 cancels, that's the hole. So we have a hole at x equals 3, which is why that's one of the answers, because it's wrong, even though as you're working, you see this number. The AP exam will do that to you. As you're working, you see numbers, and those will be possible solutions. So don't just immediately think, oh, I got it. That's the x value. We want the y value of the hole. So a y value of, a whole, of the whole is basically you take the simplified version of the function. So in this case, it's going to be x plus 7 over, what was it, x plus 3? x plus 3. You just take the simplified version, and you plug the 3 into the simplified function. So what's that going to be? 3 plus 7 is going to be 10. 3 plus 3 is going to be 6. That is the y value of the whole of the graph. Okay, so again, after you take it out, whatever the hole is, the simplified function will tell you the y value of it. So it's kind of cool. So there's your answer there. Um, obviously, you got to simplify it. Number three, what value of k is the following function continuous at x equals 4? So before you even worry about this k, let's just think about what this continuous thing means. If it's continuous, that means this piecewise function equals each other at this value. So I'm going to have that sine of pi over 4. 4, not x, I'm going to plug in the 4. That first piece has to equal k square root of not an x, but a 4 over 2. So why did I put 4? Again, because that's this 4 value. When the graph comes together, the two y values have to equal each other. So I just set the pieces equal. And now, from there, you just solve for k. So what's sine of pi over 4? Square root of 2 over 2 equals, and then this is going to be k times the square root of 4 over 2 is the same thing as 2 over the square root of 2. See how that works? Square root of 4 is just 2. Square root of 2 we leave. So let's, let's see here. Multiply by the reciprocal, and what do we get? Multiply by square root of 2 over 2. Multiply by square root of 2 over 2. And we get on top here a 2. On bottom would be a 4. And that's what our k is. You can simplify and you get your answer. Number four. This is a good one dealing with the intermediate value theorem. Sometimes what I'll do with things like this is I will do a quick little sketch of a graph to try and help myself understand what's going on. So where's this coordinate point zero, 01? That's going to be right here. And the coordinate point 2, 2. So we'll go out uh, one, two, somewhere up here. I'm just, you know, I'm just estimating, kind of guessing. Just to try to get an idea of what's happening here. Uh, that's where these two coordinate points are. One k, so one is going to be somewhere here, and I don't know what the k is. But I do have this line g of x equals one half. So if I sketch a quick little line of at y equals one half, that is g of x. 
So what are they asking me? They want to know where should I put this point so that this function f of x, it's, it's going to cross this line twice. Now it might cross a whole bunch of times, but just watch out this, three. If I go up here and put the y value at three, see all of these are y values down here. These are all y values. If I put the y value up here at three, there's no guarantee that it crosses this line. I need it to cross twice. So basically, any y value underneath the line will work because then it would have to come down and come back up. So that's what you're looking for, any of those that are underneath the line. Okay, number five. For what value of k will this function have a point discontinuity? A point discontinuity is just a fancy way of saying a hole. So where are we going to have a hole on this thing? The only way you're gonna have a hole is if, follow my reasoning here, is if that denominator, x minus k, cancels with a factor on top. So you have to have a factor of x minus k on top. That's the only possible way you're going to have a hole. Okay, now look at this. So that means what is going on here? You're, how do you factor this? This is weird looking. How are you gonna factor this so that it looks like this? The way you do it is, how am I gonna get the x squared in front? It's x times x. Let's not worry about the six, because look at this, k plus two. Watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to put a minus two, because if you have a negative k and a negative two, together that's like saying a negative k plus two. See, if you, you have to really understand how to FOIL or how to distribute this stuff out to understand that what this middle term is right there, that it's coming from these two things. Okay, so now that we have the middle term, now you gotta think, what is k equal? If this gives you enough information to figure out what k equals. The only possible way to get a six is it, and this has to be a negative two, is if this is a minus three. So what is k equal? k has to equal three. That's why it's this one. Okay, it's not negative three because it's already minus k, so the k value is just a three. Number six, so this is a one with a whole bunch of different coordinate points. So again, what I would probably do is just to give myself a little visual of what is going on, I like to graph them. So I'm gonna graph zero, one, and then I'll graph one, two, and then I'll graph two, zero. After two, zero, I get three, negative three. So one, one, two, three, all the way down here at negative three. And this doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just trying to get a quick sketch. And then four, three, one, two, three, four, and then way up here. All right, so there are, now I have some coordinate points. I have a little idea of, of F. I don't know for sure what the graph's doing, okay? So for example, the graph could be doing lots of things. It might be going up, down, there, 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 there. It could be doing crazy stuff all over the place. I don't know for sure what's going on. It's just, all I know is that these are coordinate points that it goes through. So when it asks the question, let's get rid of that line. When it asks the question, which of the following statements about the zeros of F are true, realize that it could be doing anything. It might just be connecting the dots and doing that. It could be just that. I don't know for sure. Uh, so f has exactly one zero from here to here, from zero to four. It can't have one zero. If it's, cro if it's touching here, and then it's gonna go down and come back up, it has to have more than one, right? So it's not that one for sure. f has more than one zero. I know that, right? It's got, it's got this one and this one. I just talked about that. Okay, so that's, that's probably the answer, but let's just see why these aren't. F has more than two zeros. It might not have more than two. I know it's going here, here, and it, and it has to at least cross this one. So I don't know for sure, because it could look just like that, where it has exactly two. F has exactly two zeros. I just showed that. It, it could have two, but it could also have more than two, because of the example I drew before, where it goes up and down. Okay, so that's why these are not necessarily true. That's where it gets confusing. It could have more but it also could look just like that. That's why we know it has to have more than one. The function f of x has a removable discontinuity at, okay, removable. Removable discontinuity is another fancy way of talking about a hole. Where is a hole? 
So in other words, a hole that we could fill in and make it continuous. Okay, that looks like a hole, but it's not because just filling that in does not make this continuous. Same here. You can't fill this in and then all of a sudden make the graph continuous. So there are no just gaps in the graph with a hole like that. So it has no removable discontinuities. There are no just holes in this graph anywhere. Number eight, on what intervals is f of x continuous? Okay, so brackets mean it's a closed circle that it includes it. And then holes mean it is a parentheses. So bracket, bracket, parentheses, bracket, parentheses. And then we don't have to stop here. You don't have to stop at one. You can continue all the way to 2.5, bracket. Okay, so that's all you're looking for when it goes bracket, bracket, parentheses, bracket, parentheses, bracket. <laughs> okay, you gotta look through those and find which one that is. That's all it is for this one. The function has a jump discontinuity. So at what x values? Where is a jump discontinuity? That just means it jumps from here down to here. So an x value there at negative two, and then you continue here and jump down. So an x value of x equals zero. And then there is no discontinuity here. It's, it's a sharp corner, but it's continuous. So it's just these two places, negative two and zero. Which is why it's D. Okay, that's all of them. Good luck on that master check.